The cables of the suspension bridges connecting Manhattan to Brooklyn and Queens are failing. The roadway of the Brooklyn Bridge is held up by just over a thousand vertical suspender or hanger cables, each about the thickness of a human wrist. Each cable is made up of seven strands of steel twisted around each other, a total of 100 miles of steel in every cable. The cables are galvanized, covered in a protective coating of zinc which corrodes much more slowly than the underlying steel. This is a wire from an existing a cable from an existing bridge, a hanger cable. And you look at the condition of the cable. You can see the paint is uh, peeling off, and you can see that there are places where there's red rust. That means that the coating on these wires, which are mostly galvanized coating, the galvanizing is failing. And so now you have a wire uh, that's uh, going to rust, and you may have failures uh, by fracture of individual wires. Once you've broken enough of the wires, then you begin to break wires as kind of a cascade. And you'll see them fray, and then the rope will fail. Four years after people. In Sydney Harbor, near the Opera House, trouble is brewing for another engineering marvel. The Sydney Harbor Bridge, nicknamed the Coat Hanger by locals, is one of the tallest steel arch bridges in the world. It was made with the special ability to expand and contract the bridge towers 430 feet above the harbor water. But in Australia's extreme heat, the steel arch expands to grow a foot taller during the day, shrinking back to size at night. After four years in the strong sun and salty air of Sydney Harbor, signs of corrosion are everywhere. And corrosion in one particular area could eventually doom this massive structure. This coat hanger has hinges to allow the bridge to grow taller. The hinges are at each end of the massive single arch. But corrosion may soon cause the hinges to lock together. What will happen if the bridge loses its ability to expand and contract. After people, within sight of where the majestic opera house once stood, the Sydney Harbor Bridge is nearing its own end. The aging steel is under tremendous stress, which once allowed the bridge to expand during the hot Australian days, but they became corroded and locked long ago. That pressure and severe corrosion could finally cause a cascade of crumbling supports. The bridge collapses into the harbor. When it opened as a gateway to Ontario, Canada in 1929, Detroit's 1,850-foot-long Ambassador Bridge stood as the longest suspension bridge in the world. In the time of humans, this was the busiest border crossing between the U.S. and Canada, carrying one quarter of the merchandise, including most of the auto parts, traded between the two countries. But as the vertical suspension cables give way, Nothing will ever cross this bridge again. Those vertical suspension cables are exposed to the wind, exposed to the weather, and they vibrate quite a bit in the wind. So they're a major wear area and a major maintenance problem for any keeper of any suspension bridge. But in a life after people, 
there is no one to repair the frays in the vertical cables. The weak spots are basically down at the bottom of the cable, where the cables actually tie into the deck. The vertical cables lay over one of two horizontal white lines known as catenary cables. 37 steel strands, each about a foot in diameter, interweave to form just one of the catenary cables. As multiple cables break, it actually changes the shape of the white catenary cable that holds the whole thing up because it's no longer taking an even amount of weight at each interval. Another vertical cable snaps, and a segment of the deck crashes into the river. A 150-foot gap now gashes through the road to Canada. Within seconds, the other sections fall. Arching across the water, two bridges, the Golden Gate and the San Francisco-Oakland Bay, are strangely silent. In the time of humans, the Golden Gate was an engineering marvel, crossed by 108,000 cars every day. Two days after people, the only thing crossing the bridge is a single, silent assassin. San Francisco's greatest landmark will die by fog. The moisture that's in the fog itself, condensing on the bridge, will promote the formation of rust. So in a very real sense, the fog may steal in on little cat feet, but when it comes to a steel structure, it's a tiger. To the east, the Bay Bridge stretches more than four miles, connecting San Francisco to Oakland. No single bridge could span that distance. So in 1933, engineers solved the problem by building a series of bridges. A causeway section, a cantilever in the middle, and a double suspension design for the deepest part over the shipping channel. The Bay Bridge is a bit of a mongrel or a mutt, but in a good sense. After a section of it collapsed in a 1989 earthquake, the bridge was retrofitted with new bolts, plates, and steel. Sturdier than ever, two days after humans, its only traffic is dust. But that will bring its own chance. Years after people, the crucible steel of the mighty Golden Gate Bridge has been humbled by common oxygen. What you're talking about is a bridge that is painted rust red now. Years from now, it's going to be rust rust. May very well be the same color, but when you get close, it's not going to be a healthy place. Dense fogs feed the rust, which threatens at the point of highest stress the vertical cables that bear the crushing weight of the deck. The roadway is not designed to support itself it's really designed to be suspended from these cables. The failure of one cable quickly triggers others around it. Unsupported, the roadway plunges 245 feet into the chill gray waters of the bay. Only a few miles to the east, the Bay Bridge is in a drier and warmer location. This slows rust, but the moisture triggers another kind of growth. It will actually look a bit like a forest. There'll be a lot of trees growing on it. There'll be a lot of vegetation growing on it. Without maintenance crews to clear the fledgling forest, dirt clogs the expansion joints. With no room for movement, one spans going down. 200 years after people, only the skeletal specter of the Golden Gate soaring towers remain. But by the shallows of the Bay Bridge, enough debris has built up around the piers 
to form a more permanent passage. It will create land by creating an obstruction so that natural silt flows in the bay will actually start piling up against this mess. It will become almost like an island or peninsula all by itself.